Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our preparatory ground instruction for exercise 17 on the circuit. You should have read through this chapter in our flight training manual. We're going to discuss how to do a circuit at controlled and uncontrolled airports. And uh, this is really important uh, for you to know uh, because it, for safety's sake, you want to, especially at an uncontrolled airport, uh, you want to be able to join the uh, circuit uh, properly. And something a lot of pilots kind of forget to do uh, once they're licensed. So let's assume we took off and we uh, we followed all our procedures for our normal takeoff. And so we're just going in the circuit. We'll start at the after takeoff checks. So here we are, we've done our after takeoff checks. So typically here, I turn crosswind. This is about 600 feet AGL. This kind of makes a nice circuit. Uh, 600 feet AGL, I, I turn crosswind. And then approaching a thousand feet, usually around 900 feet, I turn and level off. So I level off at a thousand feet. And then remember from a climb, attitude, power, trim. So I lower the nose, the cruise attitude, power, and trim. I set up. And I want to be approximately one half to three quarters of a mile from the runway. I personally like doing nice tight circuits. I don't know why people do these massively big circuits. Uh, I like them for a number of reasons. I think it's more safe. I think you get better landings out of it, better planning. And you can actually fit more aircraft in a tight circuit because you can always make it bigger, but it's very difficult to get everyone to make it smaller. But some schools just love these massive circuits. I don't know, uh, you know, some of these colleges, I, they're great colleges, but for some reason, some people want to do like cross countries and they're like two or three miles out, you know, they're somewhere way out here. And it's just a pain in the neck for anyone that, you know, I could do two circuits in what they can do in one. So try to keep it in tight. That's my personal preference. Somewhere, uh, on the downwind, you're going to do your pre-landing checks and uh, check your passenger, make sure that they are still secure. A radio call. So just let's say uh, uh, Thunder Bay Tower, Alpha Bravo Charlie, right downwind 25, touch and go. Okay. Now here's where the landing really sets up. And if you don't set up well, uh, your circuit well, your landing generally will be not as good. So a beam the runway, so right here, Start reducing the power. And again, this is assuming that you're in nice and close, half a mile to three quarters of a mile. Reduce the power to 1,500 feet and just pull back, maintain altitude and slow to the flap speed. So important, maintain altitude. Don't start descending. By the time you're here, we'll be about 10, 15 seconds later. And you'll be at, let's say, 70 knots at this point. So you're now 45 degrees from the runway and you can turn, you can turn your base and drop 20 degrees of flap. Uh, you can also drop 10 degrees of flap. I like going straight to 20. It's up to you. It depends on what you prefer or what your instructor prefers. And then you kind of descend. You're doing, let's say, you're going to have like 1,500 RPM, maybe a bit less, 1,300. All depends on how far out you are. You're going to descend, continue to descend, and you're going to turn final. On final, you're going to put your flaps as required. So generally full flaps, slow to approach speed. And if you set this up, uh, well, and you'll get used to this, you will pull your power back like right here. And I can do landings where I pull the power back to a certain setting and I don't touch it until I need a power idle for landing. And and just by, you know, if I have a bit too much uh, power on, I can just put my flaps down earlier or not put them out um, as much if I, if I uh, until kind of the last minute. But you should be able to do that. And you will find if you can get your circuit procedure down uh, pat, uh, you'll, you'll end up with a lot better uh, landings. So I'm going to just show you uh, a video here of this is how a circuit is done. It's going to take place uh, right after takeoff and coming in for a landing. So on departure on a controlled airport, uh, you're going to make a radio call. So the initial radio call, let's say Winnipeg Ground, Cessna 180 Fox, Alpha Bravo Charlie with information echo. And then the usual, who you are, where you are, what you're doing. So Alpha Bravo Charlie, on April 4, request taxi clearance for VFR flight to Moosney at 7,500 feet. Okay. At a controlled airport, aircraft do require taxi clearance. And you have to hold short prior to the runway at the markings. And if there are no markings, it has to be 200 feet from the runway. When you're ready for takeoff, you're going to switch over to your tower frequency. Winnipeg Tower, Fox Alpha Bravo Charlie, holding short runway 36, ready for departure. And they'll uh, clear you for takeoff. Uh, remember, you don't need to, re uh, you don't have to have permission to switch from tower to switch frequency when it's clear of the zone, but it is a courtesy. So you're going to take off. And once you're clear of the zone, I usually just tell them clear of the zone, or they'll see you and, and 
clear you on route. Approaching a controlled airport, you have to call prior to entering the control zone. So the typical courtesy is five to 15 miles, depending on your speed. If you're in a fast airplane, call them earlier so they have more time. So again, you're gonna make your initial call, Winnipeg Tower, Cessna 180, Fox, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie with information echo. And then they're gonna come back and you're gonna do the usual who you are, where you are, and what you wanna do. So Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, 10 miles north of 4,000 feet, inbound for landing, last departed Baker Lake. So they also wanna know where you last departed from, just for the record. And so at a controlled airport, the important thing is you may join anywhere in the circuit as directed by air traffic control. You can come straight in, you can overfly the field, straight in base, straight in down. A standard circuit is left hand, which means that all, all turns in the circuit are uh, left hand turns. So here's just an example, a uh, picture from the AIM. You can come in on any direction that you want at a controlled airport. Let's talk about uncontrolled airport. And this is where a lot of pilots screw up uh, and they get kind of sloppy and they go straight in final or do something like that. And you're not really allowed doing that. So there's no air traffic control. People might not even have a radio. So it's up to pilots to avoid one another. And if everyone's doing their own little thing, uh, it just really increases the risk that there's going to be a mid-air collision. So it's really important that you look out for other traffic. So there's only two ways to join a circuit at an uncontrolled airport. One is to cross overhead the field at 500 feet uh, above the circuit altitude, if not on the circuit. And you can descend then on the upwind side. Uh, the other way is straight in on the downwind. So let's just talk about these two different ways. So the easiest one is just a straight in downwind line. You're just gonna come in here, just do your circuit, okay? If you're on the upwind side, come here, overfly at circuit height, join mid downwind and come in and land, okay? And sometimes it gets a bit confusing. What about if you're coming from down here, like the bottom? Okay, so just think about this. Well, you can't just join right in here. So there's usually what I would do is I would just be well outside the circuit, be out here and then join, join the downwind. But if you don't wanna do that, the other thing to do, let's say you don't know what the wind is doing and you have to take a look at the wind sock. So what you do is you're gonna cross over the field 500 feet above circuit height. So 1500 feet AGL, most places. You take a look at your wind sock, do whatever. Then on the upwind side, you're gonna do a descent and a turn, a 180. And then now you're gonna cross over at the field going the other direction into the circuit at a thousand feet. So descend on the upwind side and then join the circuit. So that's uh, should be pretty basic. And hopefully you remember that. And, and you will, if your examiner takes you into an uncontrolled airport, you really have to pay attention to that and, and make proper radio calls on downwind and final and everything like that. So at an uncontrolled airport, you don't need to make a radio call, uh, but it's highly suggested. If you have a radio, use it. Uh, they just don't make it a requirement because you still wanna allow people in ultralights and things like that that don't have radios to use these uncontrolled airports. And uh, the radio calls you have to make, you have to make a call prior to taking position on the runway, clear the circuits on departure, then on your way in, uh, five minutes prior to landing, overhead the field, downwind, final, and clear the runway. So just remember those, uh, radio calls, it's really important on your uh, on your flight test that you do recall them. We'll start this circuit demonstration with the takeoff. Here we just have a normal takeoff, just like we learned in the last lesson. Just going to apply full power, maintain runway center line using the rudder, and rotate at our normal takeoff speed. And we'll do our after takeoff checklist. After takeoff, maintain the extended runway center line. You may have to crab into the wind. Here we are approaching the our circuit altitude, a thousand feet above the ground. Once we reach our circuit altitude, we're going to turn downwind and level off from the climb. When we're about midfield, we're going to do our downwind checks and make our radio call to air traffic control or to the circuit pattern frequency. On downwind, it's important that you remain parallel to the runway, so you'll have to crab into the wind if you have a crosswind at altitude. When you're 45 degrees to the runway, reduce power, slow down, 
lower your flaps and begin your base turn. Approaching the extended center line of the runway, you can turn final. I'm going to turn final. Once on final, you can put full flaps down. Start thinking about your touchdown point and where you need to aim in order to touch down at your touchdown point. Adjust your power and maintain your approach speed. Let's talk about the uh, flight test standards for the circuit. Uh, you have to maintain an accurate circuit. So uh, just kind of keep a nice square circuit, keep uh, other aircraft in sight, communicate clearly, radio calls, and you have to maintain 100 uh, feet. Uh, that's pretty much all there's to it. It's it's pretty simple exercise. There's no reason why on a on a flight test you can't get a four on on these circuits. You will have had enough uh, time. So just to review, at a controlled airport you can join the circuit anywhere. In an uncontrolled airport, you have to join the circuit overhead or downwind. The radio calls are uh, prior to entering the maneuver area, taking position, clear the circuit five minutes prior to landing, overhead the field downwind final clear of the runway. So you'll get plenty of practice doing that uh, flying in the airplane. So that concludes this lesson on the circuit. Thanks for uh, joining me. We'll talk about the landing uh, lesson in our next uh, lesson.